I'm actually really impressed that I understood this at one point. I mean, pages like, like that. So this is my PhD thesis, uh, which was submitted in 1974 uh, to receive uh, the PhD in chemistry uh, from Yale University based on the work I did there as a graduate student when I was mostly interested in quantum mechanics. My lab was basically a desk. It was in the basement of the Klein Chemistry Building. There were no windows. <laughs> the rest of the people in the group were doing experiments with molecular beam machines. I was the theoretician. And a lot of what I did was pencil and paper. But then once I got to the point where I thought I had a pretty good model, I wanted to calculate exactly what would happen if you did this experiment and could I even see whether I could make a prediction that could be experimentally verified. So that meant writing programs. I would have to run them at night, uh, anytime after 1 a.m. when the price went down because my advisor said he could not afford to pay for too many computer charges. So I became a bit of a night owl. It was a little lonely at times. Uh, <laughs> Being there late at night, which I often was, uh, I would interact with other graduate students who uh, kept a night schedule, and there were plenty of them. And one in particular, who was just one floor above me, uh, Jay, was working in a lab of a nucleic acid chemistry uh, professor. And we would, you know, take a break at 2 a.m., and I would tell him what I was doing right then, and he would sort of look at me like, okay, whatever. And then he would tell me what he was doing. And uh, this was right at the point where recombinant DNA was being invented. The idea that you could splice pieces of DNA and put together new structures that might actually be kind of interesting for understanding how life works. And I was astounded that actually I had missed this whole thing about biology. I couldn't believe I came all the way to being a second year graduate student in chemistry without realizing that life made sense. It always seemed to me that it didn't make sense. It was just this muddy stuff. And it was a revelation. I wanted to contribute. I wanted to have some insight uh, to, to feel like my involvement in science had meant something. I wasn't sure I was going to be in a place to make that claim very strongly in the path I was on. And I wanted to really open up every possible horizon. And somehow medical school seemed like the way to do that. I was only at Yale for three years. Uh, I got there in September of 1970, and I was starting medical school in September of 1973. Um, I convinced my thesis committee that I had done enough work uh, to qualify for the PhD, and they said, okay, you need to go and write. The summer of 73, I was sort of homeless because <laughs> we, um, I sent my wife and daughter on to North Carolina and I basically moved in with a guy next door, who happened to be a Yale professor, who was willing to let me stay in his house and tried to start writing, but it was pretty chaotic. Did it really add significantly to the knowledge that the universe contains? Well, it would be a rather small contribution, to be sure. But I think the greatest beneficiary of my PhD was not probably the universe, it was probably me. It's not about learning techniques. I didn't learn any techniques in my PhD that I've ever used since. It's about a way of thinking, about a way of approaching a problem. And that's essential. Maybe it doesn't have to be in the framework of a PhD, uh, but you need to have that time somewhere along the way. study something, study something important. It might be risky, it might be hard, it might not work, but there'll be time, plenty of time uh, to take the bread and butter experiments in stride, but don't use that PhD experience in that way. And I think anybody who's listening to this now and thinking about their own career, if they think they're on a linear pathway, well, think again, almost nobody is going to be, especially now. So be prepared for that. Uh, I'm not sure I was prepared for that, but I forced myself into that space and I will always be glad I did. <laughs>